Hi guys, this is Joe Neville and I'm back with another BGP in depth video. In this one we're going to be looking at IBGP loop prevention. Now in my last video I was explaining why loops are bad when it comes to IP routing and that was focusing on how external BGP uses AS path to prevent loops. But what about internal BGP? Have a look at this diagram, we've got four nodes, they're all in the same AS. We can't use AS path because all of the devices are within the same AS. So if they were going to block based upon an AS, then they would never receive each other's routes. I think a fair question to ask is, is there an alternative BGP attribute for IBGP that prevents loops like eBGP uses AS path? Well, the answer is no. There isn't another attribute which IBGP uses. IBGP actually imposes design rules rather than using an attribute in BGP updates. And the design rule for IBGP is that no IBGP learnt prefix is advertised to an IBGP peer. The key important points of these design rules are that it is the IBGP learnt prefixes and it is the advertisement to IBGP peers. Here's a diagram of my network. I'm using VSRs on my laptop again and we've got three nodes within a single AS. So AS65001, we've got VSR101, 102 and 103. They are configured as you can see here. I've got a connection from 101 to 103 and 103 to 102 but no connection between 101 and 102 at the moment and you can also see that VSR 101 has an eBGP connection out to VSR 201 which is in a different AS of course okay so let's have a look at those rules then prefixes to eBGP peers that will be advertised are locally learnt ones eBGP learnt prefixes and IBGP learnt. Let's log into the VSRs so I can illustrate this further. Here we have three putty sessions to different VSRs running on my laptop. We will have a look first of all at how we advertise prefixes to EBGP peers. So that will be locally learnt, EBGP learnt and IBGP. So on the VSR 101 which I have here I am injecting this 172.0 dot zero dot zero slash 24 I'm using a network statement to inject that into BGP I will show you there you can see the network statement to inject it and there it is so that's locally learned so that will be advertised to our eBGP peer which is VSR201 Yes, so there it is in the table as we would expect. Also, eBGP learnt prefixes will be advertised to other eBGP peers and also iBGP learnt prefixes will be advertised to eBGP peers. So it, to illustrate that, I've got my connection here to VSR 103 and I'm injecting this 172.30.99 slash 24 that's advertised from VSR 103 down to VSR 101 and 101 should advertise that out to VSR 201 so if we look You can see there I'm injecting the network and if we look at the VSR 101 BGP table there it is and we've got an I next to it which means that it's learnt via IBGP then if we check down on VSR 201 there it is and you can see that it's got an E next to it because it's learnt it across an external BGP session so it started off IBGP and then as it was advertised across this link here via eBGP, it turned into from 
VSR 201's point of view, it's an externally learnt prefix. Okay, so what about prefixes advertised to IBGP peers? This is where the IBGP design rules come in. So locally learnt will be sent, EBGP learnt will be sent, but IBGP learnt prefixes will not be sent to IBGP peers. Now I've already shown you that locally learnt prefixes will be sent to IBGP peers. That was 172.30.99 was being advertised down to VSR 101 via an IBGP session. So we've got a tick there. Also, EBGP learnt prefixes will be sent to IBGP peers. To prove that, I've got VSR201 injecting this 192.168.99 slash 24 prefix into BGP. It's being advertised via eBGP to VSR101 and 101 should advertise that via an iBGP session to VSR103. So let's just check that. If we look over here, at the VSR 101's BGP routing table, you can see that 192.168.99, so that's being learned eBGP. And we've got the AS path there, 65002. Now, if we look at the VSR 103's BGP routing table, we should see this 192 prefix. And there it is. So you can see again the state, the nature of the prefix has changed because of the nature of the session that it was sent over. So it started off being injected by VSR201 across an eBGP session. So we have there on 101 the E, but then it was advertised from VSR101 via an iBGP session. So from the point of view of VSR103, it is an internally learnt BGP prefix. So you've got an I next to it there. Now, finally, to break the loops, IBGP learnt prefixes will not be advertised to IBGP peers. And in this case, if you think that through then, so this prefix here, the 192.168.99, should not appear on VSR 102's BGP routing table. And also you can say, the 172.30.0 slash 24. So neither of those should appear in VSR 102. I've logged into VSR 102. Let's look at the BGP table. And there we are. So only the locally injected 172.30.99, that's the one, that's the network that VSR 103 is injecting. That's the only one that is passed over the IBGP session, illustrating IBGP's design rules which stops loops. But then how do we get around this situation and allow VSR 102 to see these prefixes? The answer is by full meshing our IBGP peers. As you can see in this diagram here, the way that we will be able to solve this issue is by connecting all of our IBGP peers together. Thus, rather than VSR 102 needing to learn the prefixes via 103, 102 will learn about the prefixes 192.168.99 and 172.30 directly from VSR 101, thus adhering to IBGP's design criteria. To prove this, I will bring up the link between VSR 101 and 102. I've already got it configured, so all I have to do is raise the interface. BGP is already up. Let's have a look at VSR 102's BGP routing table again. And there are those other two prefixes. 172.30.0 slash 24 and the external 192.168.99.0 being learnt directly from VSR101 now. Okay, great, so full mesh solves the problem and stops routing loops for IBGP. However, full mesh is problematic. Have a look at this diagram here on the right. I've got four nodes in an IBGP network. 
that means that we need to have six BGP sessions between them to full mesh these devices. And remember also that that's six sessions, but you would need to configure both ends for each session. So that's quite a lot of configuration just for four nodes. What about five nodes? Well, that goes up to 10 sessions. So to connect all of these together in a full mesh, that's 10 sessions. Six nodes is 15 sessions. So you can see the way that this is going up and up quite rapidly. And the big problem with full mesh is that it doesn't scale. So in this table here, I've got the number of nodes in the IBGP network and the number of BGP sessions that we would need. Have a look at these figures, 10 nodes, 45 sessions, 20 nodes is 190, 50 nodes, over 1000 BGP sessions. So obviously a lot of overhead, a lot of configuration work. Full mesh simply doesn't scale. Here's the algorithm that is used to work out how many sessions are needed. So the number of sessions equals the number of nodes multiplied by nodes minus one and then divided by two. Here's a simple Python function that I put together to define links and nodes. And then I can just put in the number of nodes to come up with, print out the number of links that are required. But that isn't the end of the story because there are workarounds to solve this IVGP scaling problem. One of the workarounds is to employ root reflectors in your network. And another way around this is to use confederations. Now, root reflectors are getting a lot of attention at the moment, especially within data center, spine and leaf networks where they're being deployed. And I thought it was a subject that was worth devoting a whole video to. So in my next video, I'll be talking about root reflectors. So that's it for this video. Please join me in my next one where I'll be taking a closer look at root reflectors. Please do like, comment and subscribe if you like what you saw here. That's all for now. Thanks for watching. I'm Joe Neville and goodbye.